Hey, Miles here at Tackle High Bits Thursday, so that means live fire, and we are going to continue where we left off on Monday, and we are now going to practice taking shots from the holster. Well, you know, depends on where you carry, it doesn't really matter, but whatever carry position, you're going to draw quickly to a prep trigger to one shot. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Today's live fire session is pretty simple in terms of setup. You can do this in the indoor range, outdoor range. Hopefully they allow you, at the indoor range, hopefully they allow you to draw. I have a target about five yards away, but you can use a target any distance you want. Really the learning here and what we're working on is not necessarily on the accuracy. I do want you to be accurate, but what we're trying to do here is exactly what we did on Monday. Have a fast draw, know what you're actually shooting and have a prepped trigger even before you get to this point, all right? Even before you're at presentation here. You're going to time this, you, you, ideally you want to. If you are brand new and you feel uncomfortable, then don't use a timer first, okay? Just work your mechanics and progressively get faster. But I do want you to get to a point where you're trying to push the speed a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy, especially if you feel insecure in your abilities just you know, right now, but maybe start at 50%. Without a timer, 60%, 75%. And then as you feel more comfortable, add a timer, then again, push the speed. So I'm gonna talk this one through. I'm not gonna use the timer just yet. I am locked and loaded here. And I'm not gonna use the timer. So this is how I would possibly start if I were a beginner here. I did my dry fire diligently. So what I'm gonna do is 50%. I'm going to do my draw. I'm gonna talk this through, do my draw, prep my trigger confirm that I'm looking and aiming in on what I want to hit, break the shot, reset and prep. So I reset already, I'm ready for another shot. If I need to take another shot, I'm good. Finger off the trigger and holster, okay? So again, now I might push the speed a little bit. So if I it was a comfortable at 50%, maybe I go to 75%. So I'm here without a timer, prep the trigger. I confirming my aim here on what I want to hit. I'm good, break the shot, prep trigger finger off, and then back. That's the idea. Then you would push it, push it, go as fast as you can, okay? Then break out the timer. The timer for a lot of shooters changes things. So in those two reps, it might have been like, oh, no big deal, everything's fine, but now you know you're being timed. And this is for you. When you guys use the timer, you should be recording your time or have a mental reference of your best times. It's better to always record your average times. And the next session you do this, next time you do this, you want it to get better and also you, you want to have accurate hits. So I'm going to just do this at any, you know, maybe 80 to 100% speed and just kind of see where we're at here. Okay. Notice though, there's one variable there that I forgot to mention here. We are pausing before we break the shot. Okay. So me, that was a 136, my time 136 with a pause here to confirm I have a good shot. I do not want you to do this, okay? Even though there, this is something that you would do for real, right? You need to train yourself to also make sure you're shooting at what you want to shoot. Okay, exactly what you shoot. So I don't want you to do this. Okay. Accurate shot, yes, but for some people, they may not even be looking at what they're shooting, right? They're just like, they're, they're, they're just sending a Hail Mary pass. So that one was a uh, 0.84, okay? So there was a, there was a, like a 0.5, half a second difference for me pausing, okay? So now, as you begin to get a baseline here, you wanna do that for a number of magazines until you're comfortable and you're consistent with your performance. So I'm gonna do one more rep here with that pause. Feel good here, finger off the trigger, and back. After each rep, you can also go through that mental checklist that I've talked about in this series. And that is a good idea. Do I have a good stance? Do I have, am I, have are my arms relaxed? Do I have a good grip? Is my trigger prepped? So on and so forth. Are my sights aligned, ready to take another shot? Those are all very important. So you can add that, and I do recommend adding that. So when you are comfortable, after you've done a number of magazines and you're consistent, you can do one of two things, okay? Actually, one of three things. One is 
try to even push the speed even more. Maybe you start to break. So I'm gonna really try to push the speed here and uh, see what happens. So I still hit the A zone, but notice how it's low left because I was just pushing. I was just pushing here. And that was a 0.72, you know, from a retention holster here. So now let's just pretend that was really far. Maybe I do one magazine and all the shots are all over the place. That tells me that speed is where my current limit is. And I'm going to work on that area, that kind of that zone to increase my accuracy and speed over time. Okay, it might not happen overnight. So that's the first thing. You can try to increase your speed at your given distance. The next thing is you can move back, okay? I won't do that because it's self-explanatory, but yeah, I can move one yard back, two yards back, three yards back. You, you, I don't have to demonstrate it. You know what I'm talking about. But you do the same exact thing. If I start to break, then I know, okay, at that distance and with my timer, I know that time and distance standard is kind of where my skill sets are at. And then over time, you're going to try and improve beyond that. The third thing is take two shots. Now, this combines uh, the recoil management that we've been talking about and uh, combines it with the draw. So last week we talked about the build drill, which is six shots. If you did that correctly, two shots should be nothing. So here I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna demonstrate two shots and I'm gonna pause before I take the shots. Do it again. So that's what we're gonna do. And notice how I'm still having that pause to identify my target. And you want to look at the target. If you, you know, you're, we're working speed, the draw here specifically for these videos here, but as a secondary focus, look at your target. That's gonna tell you if your shots are off or based on all the material we covered thus far, there are little things that you might need to tweak. Maybe your wrist tension was off. Maybe you were anticipating so on and so forth. So that will be secondary, but for today, Primary goal is to focus on the speed. Don't be shaky at the end here. Confirm your shot and arrive with a prepped trigger. I don't want you to arrive here and just slap it, okay? For this particular exercise. Yes, there will be instances where you slap the trigger, but we are not working that today. We're, we're, we're working trying to get there with a prep trigger because if you have the opportunity to do so, that's better than trying to slap it all the time, right? Because then you'll have chances of you being more accurate are gonna be much better if you arrive with a prep trigger. So this is something that you can practice at the range and dedicate an entire live fire session to, or maybe you wanna combine this with different exercises, but you wanna do enough reps to really hone in and get some good reps to practice what you're supposed to be practicing and really hone in on the feeling of your grip, your stance, everything. That's how you're gonna learn. You know what right feels like as well as right looks like. So I hope you guys like today's live fire session. Give it a go. Let us know what happens in the comments below and if you have any challenges or questions. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next week.